going on guys? Welcome back to my channel and today we are reviewing Mission Impossible 3. So Mission Impossible 3 is directed by J.J. Abrams. It stars Tom Cruise once again as Ethan Hunt, the beloved character. And Tom Cruise actually chose J.J. Abrams to direct this movie because apparently Tom was like a fan of J.J.'s shows like Alias and Lost. And back then J.J. Abrams was not as famous so everyone was like, what? Who's that guy? What are you talking about, Cruz? You're insane. Along with many other things that happened back then that led people to believe that Tom Cruise was insane. Anyway, Mission Impossible 3 tells the story of Ethan Hunt, who is out of the business. He is no longer doing spy work. He has completely just removed himself from that business, and he is engaged to this woman named Julia. And she is everything to him. Like, he loves this girl, and she loves him. He is everything to her. They have such a strong bond that it truly does not feel like it could be broken by anything. So when the IMF comes into conflict with a sadistic arms dealer who wants to get his hands on a very deadly and dangerous weapon known as the rabbit's foot, Ethan is called back in to help them. And all is going well until that dealer, played by Philip Seymour Hoffman, gets his dirty little hands into Ethan's personal life, and a psychological battle begins between the two of them. Jumping right into my positives guys positive number one ethan hunt one of my biggest negatives with mission impossible 2 was that ethan hunt was basically just james bond and if you remember in that review i very calmly and very respectively said mission impossible is not james bond and i made sure to keep it quiet in this movie however ethan hunt is not james bond he is back to the ethan hunt that we love he is so human in this movie he's probably the most human and relatable that he's been in this entire series and that is heavily due to tom cruise's performance and the script with the script that Tom Cruise was handed for Mission Impossible 2, he couldn't act human. He needed to act like an invincible superhero. In this movie, he was given such a human script that he needed to be human. He needed to have those emotions. And he sold it every scene he was in. I've never seen Tom Cruise cry in a movie before. I'm sure there was movies before MI3 where he did. I mean, Jerry Maguire, come on. But in the emotional scenes in this movie, he blew me away. I had no idea that Tom Cruise could act like that because I've never seen Jerry Maguire. I just know that scene. Positive number two, the score. Another negative with MI2 was that the score was just a loud, screechy, heavy metal, headbanging type thing. In this movie, it takes the score from the original film and adds in some deep bass and some really really nice cinematic drums that really flesh out the score and set the tone for this movie which is darker and grittier than the previous two entries and i don't know why i just like that for some reason I don't know. Positive number three, the direction. Like I said, this film is directed by J.J. Abrams, who gets made fun of now for his overuse of close-ups and lens flares. And those are in this movie, guys. The close-ups and the lens flares are in this movie, but they're not all over the place to the point where it's distracting. It never once took me out of the experience. In fact, when he uses lens flares, it helps set the tone for that scene. In the emotional scenes, in the broad spectacle action scenes, those lens flares really do help. And like I said, they're not distracting and they're not all over the place and they don't don't take up 95% of the screen. I'm looking at you, Star Trek. And Abrams actually helms the action scenes in this movie extremely well. There is some shaky cam, but it's not like extreme telephoto zoomed in all over the place shaky cam where you can't even tell what's happening. So you can still tell what's going on and it's not jittery and it helps set the rawness and the stakes for that scene. You feel like anyone at any moment could get shot. And that's a good thing to have in an action scene because we feel so strongly for Hunt and we really relate to him that when these big action scenes start to un fold, we want him to survive. We want him to get out of that safely, along with the rest of his team. Positive number four, the villain. The villain in this movie is played by Philip Seymour Hoffman, who portrayed this villain perfectly. I do not have a single problem with his performance in this movie. This is one of the most sadistic villains that I've ever seen in a movie, aside from the Joker in The Dark Knight. I mean, you just feel like this guy could just snap at any moment and just shoot somebody. He wouldn't even care. He wouldn't even care to look at them. I mean, come on. And this psychological battle that he is having with Hunt, he he really gets inside Ethan's head, and it was very hard to watch sometimes. Positive number five, the stunts, obviously. Tom Cruise doing all of his own stunts once again, amazing. Like, that's just incredible. 
And I'm pretty sure Michelle Monaghan, who played Ethan's wife, also did all of her own stunts. She didn't have many in the movie, but the ones that she did, I'm pretty sure she did them herself as well. And that's just always so cool to see. All the action scenes in this movie are practical. There's probably like one CGI effect that didn't stand out. It's just all done so well. It's astonishing to me. Unfortunately, it is time to get to my negatives. So negative number one, the pacing. Now, normally when the pacing is someone's negative, it normally means that they're saying that parts of the movie are too slow and that they drag. No, I actually think there are certain parts in this movie that actually are paced too fast. And I love me some fast-paced Mission Impossible, but parts of this movie are just a little too fast-paced. It'll be a very emotional character building moment that you really start to get invested in, and then you really start to feel for these characters. And it, and it just gets so intriguing and enthralling, and then BOOM! Action scene. And it just comes out of nowhere, and you're like... What? Not that I'm against scenes like that being interrupted with such a surprise, but the scenes don't even go on for very long. Just as you're starting to get invested, out of nowhere, a big action scene just explodes onto the screen, and then they never go back to that scene, and that is kind of disappointing at moments, because you were starting to get invested into that scene. Like, seriously, there's probably two or three instances in this movie where it's a very emotional character-building moment, and then an explosion just happens, and then it's just like, ah! Negative number two, the subplots. Another Another negative of mine with Mission Impossible 2 was all those subplots. None of them made any sense. The subplots in MI3 make sense, but they focus on them way too much. The central plot of this movie is that Ethan needs to protect his wife while also ensuring that this dealer does not get his hands on that weapon. That is the main plot of this movie, but there are other subplots that I'm not going to discuss purely because of time's sake, but there are certain moments in the movie where the movie focuses on those subplots so much and you're like, oh, okay, wait, what? So we're focusing on this now. Wait, wait a sec. Wait, what? What? And it just kind of bounces all over the place, and it does get kind of annoying at times. But overall, I really like this movie. I think it's a great movie, honestly. And after re-watching it and after reviewing it, I feel entirely comfortable giving this film a solid 8 out of 10. So, have you seen Mission Impossible 3? If you did, comment and let me know what you thought of it. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. And if you haven't seen it, why don't you comment and let me know if you're excited to see it now. Also, please, 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 I have asked this in videos in the past, no one's done it. Please leave me some feedback in the comments as to how you think I can make my videos better. More so, leave me comments telling me what videos you want to see. I did get one comment from one of my favorite YouTubers, Mr. Movie, who recommended that I have a playlist of my favorite movies. I was planning to do that and that will definitely be on my channel at some point. In fact, I already added one video to that playlist and that was Nightcrawler, so definitely go over there and check that out. Thanks so much for watching, guys. It really does mean a lot. Look forward to my review of Mission Impossible 4 Ghost Protocol. I'm really excited to review that. I'll see you in the next video, and until then, keep writing, keep shooting, and keep editing.